Google Cloud Self-Paced Lab, GSP769, GKE, Workload Optimization. Overview. One of the many benefits of using Google Cloud is its billing model that bills you for only the resources you use. With that in mind, it's imperative that you not only allocate a reasonable amount of resources for your apps and infrastructure, but that you make the most efficient use of them. With GKE there are a number of tools and strategies available to you that can reduce the use of different resources and services while also improving your application's availability. This lab will walk through a few concepts that will help increase the resource efficiency and availability of your workloads. By understanding and fine-tuning your cluster's workload, you can better ensure you are only using the resources you need and optimizing your cluster's costs. Activate Cloud Shell In the Cloud Console, in the top right toolbar, click the Activate Cloud Shell button. Set your default zone to a central 1A. Create a 3 node cluster. The enable IP alias flag is included, in order to enable the use of alias IP pieces, 4 pods which will be required for container native load balancing, through an ingress. For this lab, you'll use a simple HTTP web app. A single pod application, called GB Frontend Pod. To deploy the application, create a YAML file with the following lines of code. Then, apply the newly created manifest to your cluster. Container Native Load Balancing Through Ingress Container Native Load Balancing allows load balancers to target Kubernetes pods directly, and to evenly distribute traffic to pods. Without Container Native Load Balancing, load balancer traffic would travel to pods which may or may not be in the same node. In order to take advantage of Container Native Load Balancing, the VPC native setting must be enabled on the cluster. This was indicated when you created the cluster and included the Enable IP alias flag. Use the following manifest to configure a cluster IP service. The manifest includes an annotations field where the annotation for cloud.google.com slash neg will enable container native load balancing on, for your application. Then, apply the change to your cluster. Next, using the following manifest to create an ingress for your application, and apply it to your cluster. When the ingress is created, an HTTP, S, Load balancer is created along with a network endpoint group, NEG, in each zone where the cluster runs. After a few minutes, the ingress will be assigned an external IP. The load balancer it created has a backend service. This backend service has a health status associated with it. To check the health status of the backend service, first retrieve the name. Then, get the health status for the service with the following cloud command. Once the health state for each instance reports as healthy, you can access the application via its external IP. Retrieve it with Load testing your application. Understanding your application capacity is an important step to take when choosing resource requests and limits for your application's pods and for deciding the best auto scaling strategy. At the start of the lab, you deployed your app as a single pod with no auto scaling configured. By load testing it, you will learn how many concurrent requests your application can handle, how much CPU and memory it requires, and how it might respond to heavy load. To load test your pod, you'll use Locust, an open source load testing framework. First, download the Docker image files for Locust in your cloud shell.
Second, build the Docker image for Locust and store it in your project's container registry. Next, use the following commands to copy and apply the manifest, for deploying the master and worker machines for Locust. To access the Locust UI, retrieve the external IP address of its corresponding load balancer service. Then, access it in a new browser window. Locust allows you to swarm your application with many simultaneous users. You are able to simulate traffic by entering a number of users that are spawned at a certain rate. For this example, to represent a typical load, enter 200 for the number of users to simulate and 20 for the hatch rate. After a few seconds, the status should read running with 200 users and about 150 requests per second, RPs. Switch to the Kubernetes engine console in GCP. And select workloads from the left pane, then click on your deploy GB frontend pod. This will bring you to the pod details page where you can view a graph of the CPU and memory utilization of your pod. In order to see the metric values, listed below the graph, click the three dots at the top right portion of the graph, and select, toggle the legend display, from the drop-down. Now observe the used values and the requested values. With the current load test at about 150 requests per second, you may see the CPU utilization vary from as low as 0.04 and as high as 0.06. This represents 40 to 60% of your one pod CPU request. On the other hand, memory utilization stays at around 80 miles. This is your per pod capacity. Return to the Locust browser window and click edit under the status at the top of the page. This time, enter 900 for the number of users to simulate and 300 for the hatch rate and click start swarming. Your pod will suddenly receive 700 additional requests within 2 to 3 seconds. Switch back to the pod details page and observe the change in the graphs. After the RP's value reaches about 150, and the status indicates 900 users. While memory stayed the same you'll see that CPU peaked at almost 0.07, that's 70% of the CPU request for your pod. Readiness and liveness probes. A liveness probe will continuously run to detect whether a container requires a restart. They are helpful for automatically restarting deadlocked applications that may still be in a running state. To demonstrate a liveness probe, use the following manifest to create a pod that has a liveness probe. At the end of it, the initial delay seconds value represents how long before the first probe should be performed after the container starts up. On the other hand, the period seconds value indicates the interval of the probe will be performed. In this example the liveness probe is essentially checking if the file slash tmp slash alive exists on the container's file system. You can verify the health of the pod's container by checking the pod's events. This events log will include any failures in the liveness probe as well as restarts triggered as a result. To test the liveness probe, manually delete the file being used by it. Once again, check the pod's events. As the liveness probe fails, you will see events added to the log showing the series of steps that are kicked off. It will begin with the liveness probe failing, liveness probe failed, cat, slash tmp slash alive, no such file or directory. Setting up a readiness probe. Although a pod could successfully start and be considered healthy by a liveness probe, it's likely that it may not be ready to receive traffic right away. A readiness probe is used to determine when a pod and its containers are ready to begin receiving traffic. To demonstrate this, use the following manifest to create a test web server. Apply the manifest to your cluster and create a load balancer with it. After that, retrieve the external IP address assigned to your load balancer. Note that it may take a minute for an address to be assigned. So, repeat the previous command until you obtain the external IP. Enter the IP address in a browser window. And you'll notice that you'll get an error message signifying that the site cannot be reached. 
check the pod's events, and you will find that the readiness probe has failed. Use the following command to generate the file that the readiness probe is checking for. After that check the pod's events again, and this time the pod description should now show true as the value for ready. Now, refresh the browser tab that had your readiness demo SVC external IP. You should see a welcome to Inks message properly displayed. Pod Disruption Budgets Pod Disruption Budget is a Kubernetes resource that limits the number of pods of a replicated application that can be down simultaneously due to voluntary disruptions, including administrative actions like deleting a deployment, updating a deployment's pod template and performing a rolling update, draining nodes that an application's pods reside on, or moving pods to different nodes. First, you'll have to delete your single pod app. Next, use the following manifest to redeploy your application as a deployment of five replicas. Before creating a PDB, you will drain one of your cluster's nodes and observe your application's behavior without a PDB in place. Assign one of your node names to a variable. Next, drain one of the nodes by inserting one of the names from the output above into the following. Check in on your GB frontend deployment's replica count. After draining a node, your deployment could have as little as zero replicas available, as indicated by the output above. Without any pods available, your application is effectively down. Let's try draining the node again, except this time with a pod disruption budget in place for your application. First bring the drained node back by uncordoning it. The command below allows pods to be scheduled on the node again. Once again check in on the status of your deployment. The output should now resemble the following, with all 5 replicas available. Create a pod disruption budget that will declare the minimum number of available pods to be 4. Once again, drain one of your cluster's nodes and observe the output. After successfully evicting one of your application's pods, it will loop through the following. until Kubernetes is able to deploy a fifth pod on a different node. In order to evict the next one, the remaining pods will remain available in order to adhere to the PDB. Congratulations! You learned how you can create a container-native load balancer through Ingress, in order to take advantage of more efficient load balancing and routing. You ran a simple load test on an GKE application, and observed its baseline CPU and memory utilization. As well as how it responds to spikes in traffic. Additionally you configured liveness and readiness probes, along with a pod disruption budget to ensure your application's availability. These tools and techniques in conjunction with each other, contribute to an overall efficiency to how your application can run on GKE, by minimizing extraneous network traffic, defining meaningful indicators of a well-behaved application, and improving application availability. Take your next lab and learn more.